This is starting to feel like a game of chance. Who's going to get the best hand? Who will bluff or up the stakes? The big ag lie is getting bigger. This is a dust bowl update. The agriculture interests in California's Central Valley, particularly on the west side and the southern portions of the valley, want you to believe that they are suffering serious losses due to a Congress-created drought. Nonsense. We've all heard the media accounts about growers in the Westlands Water District having to fallow fields because of a lack of water, due to the government saying that salmon and other species are at risk as a result of too much water being diverted from its natural flow. A massive PR campaign is telling us that growers say these policies have created a dust bowl, putting people out of work and their farms in jeopardy of failing. The water crisis has led One Valley organization to air a controversial commercial featuring former Mayor Alan Autry. The commercial comes from an organization called Families Protecting the Valley, whose donors include several well-known members of the Valley's ag community. Alan Autry is a board member, and he says the bold new ad is necessary because the crisis is so severe. Hi, I'm Alan Autry. You know, every day in the San Joaquin Valley, many farms move closer and closer to drying up and going out of business just like this one. But Mother Nature didn't cause this drought. No, the politicians in Washington caused it. The same politicians that could end it by turning on the pumps and letting the water flow back to the valley, but they won't do it, which has left us here in the valley to make a choice. We can either stand up and fight like we've done at Families to Protect the Valley, and we invite you to join that fight today, or you can stand by and do nothing. But I'll ask you to do this when you're making that decision. Remember one thing, if you like foreign oil, you're going to love foreign food. Hey, anh có nghe tin gì chưa? Tin gì vậy anh? Nông dân ta liên hợp nha đã thiếu hụt nguồn nước. Như vậy là năm nay nhiều thực phẩm sẽ được xuất khẩu vào Mỹ. This is an ongoing crisis, and unfortunately, it is not getting the attention it deserves. It will continue to get worse, and the food supply that feeds the nation will continue to to um, deplete. When we spoke with Autry today, he also compared shutting down the Delta pumps to domestic terrorism. Maybe it's those hot Central Valley days that makes their arguments feel desperate. One thing is for sure, though, they're not letting go of the myth of the Congress-created drought. What we can do, however, is try to put some light on the situation. So let's take a close look at California from orbiting satellites above Earth. Here is a NASA satellite photo in true color taken on Wednesday, August 27, 2009, of the Great Central Valley, which includes both the Sacramento Valley and the San Joaquin Valley. The picture shows most of the San Joaquin Valley with plenty of green, indicating that growers in the valley are getting plenty of water to keep their crops going. There is also a big ring of brown around the green zones. That is not farmland out of production, but rather it is the Coast Range foothills on the west and the Sierra foothills on the east, which are never farmed anyway. There are some dry areas for sure, but judge for yourself whether the entire valley looks like a dust bowl. Looks like most farmers are doing okay. One picture is worth a thousand words. But wait, there's more. Agribusiness is turning up the heat, desperately trying to make the case that their livelihood is at stake. And in all of this, there is never a mention about the impact that their water demands have on a major renewable and sustainable food resource that is the California wild king salmon. Instead, we hear this. California farmers are in trouble because we're facing a water crisis. Our water's been cut, and it's going to be cut again. Food grows where water flows. It's as simple as that. You just can't assume that that food's going to be there. The problem affects all of us. Learn more at calwatercrisis.org because we can't take water for granted. You know, I teach my grandkids, you got to share. My grandkids are way smarter than a lot of these agribusinesses down there in the valley. They keep increasing their production and watching the price per ton of everything they're growing going down. This 80-year-old farmer down there in the valley told me, you could take half this valley out of production. 
and we'd get twice as much per ton for what we grow, and you'd have plenty of water for the salmon. Well, that made a lot of sense to me. Made a lot of sense. This fleet needs to get back to work. Back to work, indeed. It is way past time that commercial and sport fishermen can go fishing for salmon. And it is certainly time that agribusiness accept the fact that they are not the only ones that require water. We acknowledge that a natural drought is having a negative impact on some farmers. But all commercial salmon fishing has been off limits for two years now, and that hurts too. Meanwhile, big ags, big lies are getting more desperate and more suspicious. It turns out that during the last two years of the drought, Westland's water district has been squirreling away surplus water it can't use. A Westland's information bulletin dated July 23, 2009, reveals that the giant irrigation district has been hiding considerable carryover storage from last year and is adding even more this year. Westlands actually had more water than they could use, while paid protesters have been accusing federal agencies of starving farmers in order to protect the two-inch delta smelt from going extinct. Westlands has been quietly accumulating additional surplus water, water that could have gone to help restore the dwindling salmon population. Specifically, at the end of 2008, Westlands had nearly 240,000 acre-feet of water stored in facilities that it was unable to use. Nearly 94,000 acre-feet of that stored water was used through June 2009. However, the export pumping restrictions caused by the Delta Smelt Biological Opinion ended June 30th, and the state and federal projects have ramped up pumping. So why is this important? Because Westlands has made firm commitments to acquire more than 141,000 acre-feet of supplemental water and is requesting even more. Consequently, Westlands projects that the district will end the water year with approximately 275,000 acre-feet of water it is unable to use. There is also the issue of water quality standards being upheld to protect the Delta. Water quality standards have been consistently violated this year. In other words, virtually all of the standards protecting the Delta and its collapsing fisheries have been ignored. The Department of Water Resources and the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation have been violating Delta protection standards in order to supply Westlands with water they can't use. We cannot continue on our present course, that's clear. The, the way that we do things now is unsustainable. I think that we need to enter an era of limits. I think we have to take the bad and marginal farmlands out of production and we need to do a uh, thorough audit of what water is actually in the system and who gets it and whether or not it's being equitably distributed. And one thing they say about water in California, water follows money. And it's following the money right down to the Central Valley some of this water needs to follow the salmon. We need to change the rules and get back into a balance here where we can have crops and salmon. And we need to do it now. This bickering over water has to stop. Each group of water stakeholders needs to listen to the other because the oldest and most important stakeholder is nature itself, and it can't participate. There will never be enough water in California, so the choice is simple. Do we not have enough water with salmon and sustainable, thoughtful agriculture, or do we not have enough water and no more wild king salmon ever again? Our children and grandchildren need us to make the right decisions. Salmon water, now.